pediatric orthopedics to ask me queries and i'm going to answer that so varun please start thank you we cannot hear you varun hello so can you hear me yeah, yeah. So today we'll be going through different scenarios uh, with respect to lateral condyle fractures, and I'd like sir to uh, explain and also uh, uh, explain regarding the decision making and also the treatment procedures in all of these. So this is uh, uh, probably one of the uh, a type of uh, X-ray we might come through in practice, wherein we see uh, undisplaced lateral condyle fractures. so here is a case of 5 5 year old who came with a history of trauma she came with a history of fall while playing so in this case what needs to be done sir and how would you uh, treat this and how would you actually diagnose uh, what steps need to be taken after a case such as this uh, so comes quickly to uh, what i want to say is the 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 five procedure which we are going to describe today is a conservative management effective conservative management fixation in c2 close reduction arthrogram reduction and and fixation the fourth procedure is open reduction so this is the these are the only ways in which you can treat an acute lateral condyle fracture so if you know how to master these techniques you have learned how to treat now this is a very common thing uh, the first thing one you should do is take proper x rays okay so take x ray in internal rotation so show that this is x ray in internal rotation and this x ray in internal rotation is a must just ap and lateral are not enough secondly this x ray should be taken out of slab x rays in slab don't have been okay so this fracture is an incomplete fracture we saw on internal rotation view that it is just a you know metaphyseal fracture not going completely into the epiphysis we we classify this as a stable fracture there is no need to do mri arthrogram no need to admit the child just apply a well fitting uh, 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 slab now this slab something which i want to tell technique wise the slab has to be in with wrist in extension because common extensor origin is attached here and it should be in supination so that's how you are going to apply slab why not plaster because we need x ray at one week so that's why no plaster okay so what i'm going to do is call the patient after one week next one and then confirm that everything has been good again take ap lateral oblique views and if everything is good you know you this is not going to displace further and then all you do is give a now a proper plaster again with wrist in extension uh, elbow in forearm in supination and then call the patient at 4 weeks for final x ray 3 to 4 weeks in younger child at 3 weeks older child at 4 weeks how long do you give this plaster till the time fracture heals so it's not necessary that you should give plaster for 2 weeks or 3 weeks or 4 weeks or 5 weeks you have to have radiological evidence of healing in these fractures simple fractures you need to take proper x rays take proper decision and go ahead yeah varun so go ahead uh, if there are any questions you can ask okay go ahead let's skip some of this uh, theory slide these are words of wisdom and what we know as Uh, almost uh, half of the fractures can displace which which doesn't mean that you have to fix all undisplaced fractures because by fixing all you are over treating 60 to 95% next one it is also known that those who shift will shift in first 5 days or in a week's time so if your x ray at one week shows that the fracture is not displaced it's not going to displace further so i just want to you know take away the myth that every in position lateral condyle fracture has to be fixed in situ not required almost 50 to 95% of them can be treated conservatively even without doing an mri subjecting the child to anesthesia go ahead please quick but there are fractures which displace so which are the ones which actually yeah. so i'll i'll show you so i'm going to so this this is very important question there are fractures which displace so on internal rotation view if the lateral gap is more than the medial gap you know uh, if the the fracture lines are parallel then those are the ones will displace on the lateral if you see there is a displacement they will displace and on one week x ray if the fracture is displacing those will displace now necessary what is happening the fractures which are going to displace are the ones where fracture has extended to the articular surface the fracture which are not going to displace are the fractures which have not extended to the articular surface and x rays don't show that and but there is no need to do an ultrasound on mri in every case 
if you just follow these simple principles you know uh, go ahead of looking at the fracture anatomy taking proper x rays and doing a follow up x ray at one week you will be correct almost always thank you sir yeah. go ahead please yeah uh, so uh, is there an algorithm which we can follow yeah, like yeah. so uh, there is an algorithm i will yeah so i'm in interest of time i'm not going to go through this algorithm but i have already described that you take x ray in internal rotation look at the x ray if the fracture is displaced more than 2 mm if it's a, a divergent x ray articular the the fracture line is parallel or on lateral if it's displaced then those are sort of a unstable fractures which need to be fixed if you don't have any of those signs then you can conserve in plaster at one week take an x ray if it's not displaced then just conservatively treat okay so here is another child who is a 5 year old with a history of fall uh, while playing so, so this, this is, is a complete fracture presented. complete undisplaced fracture mm -hmm. on lateral there is no displacement again what will you do take x ray in internal okay. rotation mm -hmm. and you see here that the the medial gap is not very high but the mm -hmm. fracture line is going all the way down now this is indirect so you have to talk to the parents there is some risk of displacement and in this patient i will do an mri so what i do is we admit the child sedate you know ideally would do an mri and if mri show that the articular surface is not uh, bothered then i will give plaster in the mri department and send back the child okay however if the articular surface shows that the fracture line has gone through the articular surface if mri shows that then we will shift the child to the ot pa pass to k wires and treat this. so that's my algorithm so in this child patients refuse mri and what we did is very simple when patients refuse mri call them after a week it showed good healing there was no further displacement so you leave the patient alone and he healed very well go ahead yes so here is another patient who is uh, again a 4 year old uh, with a similar so uh, all mechanism similar looking injury. fractures but the yes. algorithm is different so again now you can see that the the medial gap is quite wide here and these are the fractures which are unstable go ahead please next one so this is unstable fracture this patient came with an mri but you don't need an mri in this patient you don't even need an arthrogram in these patients what you will do is these patients take under c arm under short anesthesia pass to percutaneous k wires and then uh, you know it will be fine it's important to realize that lateral condyle fracture is not in uh, vertical or horizontal plane it's an oblique plane and that's why all your fixations have to be with elbow in internal rotation okay so in this patient just for demo purposes we did an arthrogram it's really not required if you are confident you can do it but what is required is take this patient under anesthesia reduce the fracture in valgus take the x ray in internal rotation and pass two wires which will go from anterior to posterior it's important that the wires are not in medial lateral plane they go from anterior to posterior and again it's important that uh, you follow up these patients in healing maintain the k wires i for undisplaced lateral condyle fractures i put wires outside for displaced one i put the wires inside so there was a question uh, by atul in one of the meetings how do you decide whether to keep wires in or out and that's my algorithm and always follow up till healing okay don't leave the patient till the time it has healed go ahead yes. let's call so it so another uh, eight year old with a similar uh, injury yeah. so uh, such injuries would you do an mri in these yeah. cases so i i so this is in, indeterminate type go ahead with this so that this requires fixation really you know it's not necessary that mri should always be done not available everywhere not safe to do mri in a child but in that fracture it it child came with an mri go ahead so you can see that uh, you know that the fracture line is going across in ap and lateral and this patient requires uh you know close reduction and pinning so what you do here since the articular surface was involved and it was an unstable fracture on stress views that's one more thing you do intra op what you really require here is uh, an arthrogram so the question again is whether to do arthrogram or fixation first what i do is i fix them and do arthrogram later on once you do the arthrogram the fixation is very difficult there are two techniques of doing arthrogram either you can go from behind or from the lateral aspect and uh, these techniques are well described in books okay go ahead please yes so this is one more patient here arthrogram uh, close yeah. reduction arthrogram showing how to do a lateral approach arthrogram show the video please so that so is you know something where mri is not even required it's a completely unstable fracture 
so you need a reduction in these patients you need to reduce you know you need to make sure that in valgus and pronation you reduce this fracture you use k wire as a joystick and 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 keep the elbow in internal rotation whenever you are fixing now this doesn't require a screw you know very young child small metaphysis two divergent or three divergent k wires are enough okay so this is showing how to do an arthrogram uh so this is how your wires will go first you know with your thumb reducing the fracture the assistant holding the elbow in valgus giving valgus traction reducing it and you use tip of the k wire to reduce the fracture to give the pressure it's very important that when you pass the k wire you will don't rotate first pierce first and then rotate you will pierce through the cartilage and rotate through the bone yeah so the way you pass wires is again very important so two divergent wires here and then doing arthrogram yeah we'll go to next slide i think yeah. people uh, yeah so that's the arthrogram after passing the wire you have two divergent wires why i have passed two wires which are of different diameters because it's easy to recognize them in ap and lateral if you use same size wires then it becomes very confusing which wire you should advance because you know in lateral condyle it's a very soft bone and more you put the wire in and out they lose the hold so avoid uh, you know uh, too many attempts as passing these wires if you are again one more uh, sort of trip tick is uh, if you have too many attempts then you create a hematoma and which gives rise to lateral bump and which is unsightly and parents will complain about that so if you have gone soft if you have gone gentle then you will avoid a lateral bump yeah so that's how things have been fixed yeah go ahead so sometimes you may need to pass a screw in an older child so what you do is pass two wires first wire is a k wire which is on the medial side the thin wire guide wire and then screw and uh, as you tighten the screw i i generally prefer a fully threaded screw not a partially threaded screw because partially threaded screws will crush the cartilage i use a fully threaded screws but i reduce the fracture with a thumb pressure go ahead so again when you pass a screw and a wire you can remove wires early so wire is outside screw is inside and the screw is removed at 3 months so that's the advantage of having a dual fixation these are the follow up images yeah with the presence of screw you can mobilize at end of a month you don't have to give 6 weeks or 8 weeks plaster the screw allows you to mobilize early so what i do is at 4 weeks i remove the wire let the screw be inside and the mobilize these patients early because this is intra articular fracture rujha test tell me about the timing Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, still fine. Go ahead. We started at four ten. So this is with respect to open reduction, and uh, again a seven year old with a similar history of trauma. Yeah. So this, this again tells you what should not be done. So bad X rays, X rays through slab, you know, not taking internal rotation view. So all these things were done, and this patient ended up later on with a flipped over uh, lateral condyle fracture. So many people ask me, what is the duration for open reduction so you know this was just 3 week old child fracture so up to 3 months or 6 months you know i would do an open reduction if the fracture is flipped over if the fracture is in position if the range of movement is good i fix them in c2 but a fracture like this which has tilted flipped over close reduction will give rise to restriction of movements so you know you need to choose your case as well so this is an indication for open reduction the main problem with open reduction is the approach because you don't want to lose the blood supply so that's a classical lateral approach which you take so this is uh, video has been taken almost 10 years back but it still holds good so you go cut skin subcutaneous tissue and uh, examination is very important here you straight away go to the fragment there will be a fracture hematoma you will aspirate that hematoma and important thing is to you know go to the fracture site first so you start more proximally from a normal bone come down go to the fracture site you know try avoid handling the fragment that's that's my sort of okay it's important to do capsulotomy if you don't do capsulotomy 
you will not see the elbow joint and if you don't see the elbow joint you can't reduce this what i do to reduce this fracture is you know once i have sort of delineated the margins then i use k wires as joysticks you can also use a, a fork you know atul uses that i also found it very useful so a fork to reduce but most of the time k wires will do the job identify the fracture and as you can see here uh, use very gentle techniques to separate the fracture this has been almost 6 week old fracture bound to have some adhesions so to be very very careful but maintain the posto lateral blood supply because that's the lifeline of this fragment so once you have sort of cleared the fracture area on the metaphyseal side once you have cleared the fracture area gently on the on the small fragment side you know you will be able to reduce this fracture you get, you are seeing that i am using an alysis force to hold it okay i am using my thumb pressure i am using suction to also manipulate the fragment okay and you can see that uh, though i have it's a lateral approach i can see my anterior joint line very well you know it's very important that the retractors are placed in the right place and now this is a k wire which is using i am using as a joystick it's very coordination is very important so it requires two intelligent uh, pediatric orthopedic surgeons to do a lateral condyle case if it's a non union it requires me and sandeep patwada so go ahead if you can if you have a control and if you can fast yes. forward varun because we need to finish in time yes yeah so that's multiple k wires now used to fix divergent wires one wire going parallel to the articular surface the other wires in different planes you know don't go with a fixed mindset here you may have to use the best fixation here always use screws screws in delayed cases because you need to mobilize them early in this case which was done many years back i have used the washer but nowadays i don't use a washer it's more difficult to remove the washer than the screw and it irritates the child's range of movement so nowadays i don't use a washer yeah go ahead please yes. yeah show the post op x ray post op yeah these this are some the of the images in intra op post op x ray a wire and a screw again screw going from and ob obliquely you know across the fracture site yeah go ahead so remove the... wires early mobilize remove screws late that's the principle is there 4 months i and think uh, will yeah so this these are the techniques which i have shown i think we can end here there is also a video of the post postrolateral approach okay. but i think we'll skip that just stop sharing your presentation okay already 1629 so i think uh, we should finish now so i have shown four techniques one is conservative treatment i have shown fixation in c2 for undisplaced lateral condyle fracture which are at high risk for displacement i have shown a close reduction arthrogram and fixation with k wire uh, for patients uh, who have a displaced lateral condyle fracture which are reducible and then we have shown an open reduction through a classical lateral approach and fixation for lateral condyle fracture which are turned around flipped over so i hope uh, delegates will find this very useful uh, if there are any questions uh, uh, now or later on questions are part of life i am having lot of them now but please feel to ask me later any time thank you varun thank for you. taking me through this journey thank you very much thank you Great show, sir. Absolutely, absolutely uh, to the point and very clear cut. I'm happy to uh, uh, say that Dr. James Wee from Singapore has also joined in. So we have a very elite uh, audience, uh, and we'll welcome any questions for Taral at this stage. Delegates, please type in your questions into the chat box. Uh, so Taral, let me just uh, initiate the discussion. If you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, please ask here. Yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of times, you know, you get this type one fracture with minimal displacement or no displacement, and on the follow-up, it is not displaced, but the fracture line remains persistent for quite some time. Yeah. Even after six weeks, you see that the fracture line is still seen. Yeah. So, what is the time that an average orthopedic surgeon should start panicking? Yeah. So we have done a study of these now all undisplaced lateral condyle fractures. I am happy to share that 
you should wait you should wait at least till 3 months for three months. if the fracture is undisplaced in ap lateral and oblique all the three planes if fracture line is not widening but if it shows delayed healing just hold on with plaster and it will heal in fact i remember one patient where you know someone else had treated fracture line was persistent at three uh, at uh, two months and you know we were trying to fix this fracture covid came and then patient came after a month and by that time the fracture had already healed what you should look for is a soft callus on the lateral side sandeep if there is okay. a fracture line is evident but if there is soft callus on lateral <laughs> side and if fracture doesn't have much movement then you can still conserve it if however if that fracture goes for non union it's very simple to just fix it with a simple screw even at 6 uh, weeks or 8 weeks so so when will weeks you start well. when will you start rehab for these three children? rehab because three months is once, a long once, time for them to become uh, in faster so they start getting so what is the confidence six weeks six six weeks so i put a soft slab a removable slab so in and out of the but i still protect them i don't want okay. to have for them to have uncontrolled movements so we okay. give a plaster so, by wall so, the plaster in and out of the plaster do the mobilization and put the slab put the plaster back that's what i would do so what plaster i have removed at 6 weeks i i convert into a cast brace okay and you should monitor them for at least 3 months 100% so i have done now, ct scan mris but in all those patient who have delayed healing you know like ulna fracture many ulna yeah. fractures heal delayed lot of lateral yeah. condyle fracture heal delayed but you must persist and you must follow them up till the time union is complete at 3 months if they don't unite 3 months then i would put a screw at 3 months you will start considering putting a screw put a screw yeah because beyond that i don't think they will heal up there is so no attempt situ- at union at 3 months then they okay. will not heal for in situ screw you will start yeah. what's your uh, opinion sandeep no no i am just asking for the general orthopedic surgeon because right. it's a- uh see what happens is that most of the centers all over the country they don't have digital x-rays they don't have internal oblique views we have clarified enough number of times that internal oblique is the x-ray to watch for and actually calculating the medial gap lateral gap can become a challenge for a lot of people because at least the north of one are going to see this so how do we instill confidence in them that right okay you can so i think i we planning to write this up uh, i think i have time right now i'll write this up about my our algorithm for lateral condyle fracture and uh, there is lot of clarity created recently i call it as covid clarity because there was some fractures we could not operate and we could actually see the natural history the same patient at 6 weeks there is no union i would have put a screw but just because of covid thing we we held on and then lot of patients we saw they are healing up at 3 months if there is no displacement mm-hmm. so i think so a question uh, from me um, taral uh, what do you think of the configuration of the k wire and screw construct do you prefer to put them collateral as you've shown or in what situations will you use the y that we talk about so often depends on the fracture if the fracture is so so no lateral condyle is, is of same anatomy there are short lateral condyle fractures where you have to have divergent screw fixation then there are longish lateral condyle fracture where you will have two wires parallel to each other and then at sandeep has shown even molin has shown the fractures which go almost medially you will have to put three wires which are in different configuration so you know it's a 3d fracture study the fracture and you may have to decide on table your k wire fixations uh, or addition of a screw so don't go with a known uh, a notion Uh, yeah. No, it's important I, that I think the, I can I can hear you loud and clear for general orthopods all over the country. A long follow is very important in lateral condyle. Yes. Never discharge the child till you are reasonably convinced that the fracture is healed and will not displace. Dr. Meena, I think what to say? Yes. Yes. So, uh, Taral, good afternoon, and thanks yes. God that you are in front of all us. Uh, we are really happy to see your smiling face and healthy face. Thank you. But uh, one thing I want to know. in some patients in many patients due to mild infection wire come out uh, in the plaster or during the dressing in that case is the uh, another wire should be put or supplemented with the remaining wire or yeah. we have to continue with whatever wire remain inside no 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 so a loose fixation will not work here so what you need to do in that case if there is a infection with a loose wire exactly. remove the wire uh, send for scab start antibiotics and definitely pass through a 
fresh skin Separate additionally that. to two more wires and yes. uh, monitor that child because you know kvr infections in a supracondylar or lateral condylar fracture can be disastrous we should not let it happen uh, we have seen many cases yeah, but if it happens <laughs> no so one of the ways to, uh, yeah one of the ways to prevent it when the residents do it avoid multiple punctures and always remember the cartilage has to be pierced and bone has to be drilled cartilage doesn't have to be drilled by drilling the cartilage you are making it weaker and weakness a poor hold of a kvr leads to infection if the kvr hold is good then it will not lead to infection exactly exactly